Hi everyone, my name is Anthony Ruggiano Jr. and I want to welcome everybody to Reform Gangsters and I want to welcome uh, my guest once back once again, Vinny, an ex-FBI agent. Yeah, welcome thank you. again to the show. Thank um, you. We had a really good time the last time and uh, you know, I, I have some questions that I didn't get a chance, I guess, to ask you about last time like, um, and uh, so I... I Wrote them down. Yeah, of course. That's a, lists are always good. <laughs> yeah, unless yeah. you're getting arrested. The yeah. lists are terrible. Lists are but, bad. Like yeah. John Gotti <laughs> Jr. had the, the list in his house yeah. of all the made guys. Yeah, they very found bad. That, yeah. Was, that was not good. Yeah. That no. was not a good list. So um, as far as cases, I know you worked on the Colombo case. Which yeah. was the What was the biggest case that you worked on? I get that question a lot. Um, I was just doing something last week, and someone said, is there a case... I would know you from or recognize you from. And it's always a weird question because the organized crime quick cases, there really is no beginning and no end. Mm. We were just talking about Teddy right before we started yeah, right. taping here. And Teddy's trial's coming back up, Teddy Persico's trial coming back up. And I went back to my early days in the Columbo squad where Teddy, I believe, was incarcerated, then he got out, and now he's back in. So those cases never actually closed. So when people say, what was your biggest case? I think back to like a file number in my head that means nothing to anyone. Two nine zero seven six one, but that case was um, the case uh, uh, that really covered almost the entire Colombo family. So I had slivers mm. of investigations. So normally I would say to people, well, if they follow this stuff, everyone knows Sonny. Um, people might know Tommy mm. Gioli. Mm. People might know um, uh, certain wise guys within the Colombo family, and then I always have to make sure they understand that my investigations were like a chapter in that book because right. it, there were people, agents before me, right. and there were agents after me who probably arrested the same people. people exactly. You know, uh, well, it's an ongoing conspiracy, right? It's an ongoing, conspiracy, right? it's right? An ongoing That's what Rico exactly. Is. Yeah. So yeah. it's very different than yeah. on other types of cases because, like, when I was doing cyber, there was a distinct beginning. There was the middle, and then there was the end. And then the right. case was done. We never had cyber guys coming back, uh, going back to the life right. uh, when, it, when it was done. Whereas wise guys, if, even if there was a chance that a guy that was investigated, arrested, convicted, um, he might go away for a few years, but there's still the people he's connected to, his family, whether it's blood or, his, or the mm -hmm. crime family, is still very active. Mm -hmm. So it never really ends. So, I, so the short answer I usually tell people is I jump immediately to defendants that they might recognize. And I say, well, you know Sonny, you know, I, I you know, had a... Uh, I'm sure, Sonny Francis. Sonny Francis, exactly, about. right? And so I might jump to Sonny, or I might jump to, like, the 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 body recoveries we did on Long Island, mm -hmm. um, which, were, again, were a collection of um, a lot of sources that we had cooperated that, that were involved in killing Bill Cotullo and... Um, to other people and burying them out in Farmingdale. Mm -hmm. And so people who from out, from out here remember that dig. Right. So if I said, do you remember way back when in you know, 2008, there was a body recovery? And, oh yeah, I remember that. Well, that was my case, but really I was just a part of that, right. you know, that case. So I, I'll say that I think the one that gets the most recognition on the organized crime side is the case in and around Sonny, because Sonny had never been prosecuted by DOJ, by the FBI. His when he went away on the bank robbery, that was a state charge. Right. Um, Sonny was in the was being investigated by the FBI for like sixty years. Exactly. So that's pretty neat to be part of the investigation that actually resulted in him being arrested, and then him fighting it, going to trial, and being able to be the trial agent for that in the courtroom, helping to prep his son John for testimony right. was in a. I mean, that's like a yeah. once in a lifetime yeah. experience to be right. able to prep prep a son to testify yeah, against the father um, and then um, doing the source work that led into that you know running a, a source against Sonny and other people where he was making hundreds of tapes over three years yeah. in my mind that will always be sort of my biggest contribution right. to, to that 
Um, but sometimes it gets lost if I'm speaking to like a regular person, you know, at, at the club after a comedy <laughs> show, and they say, "Hey, what?" Well, you know, yeah. I don't get into all yeah. that. I'll just say, "Hey, do you know this person right. or that?" So person. when you're doing all these investigations, you got to have some. You got to sit surveillance. I mean, yeah. I mean, so now you'll see in the movies how they're all drinking coffees in the yeah. car. Like, did you have a routine? Like, yeah. You, you that's know, how I'm I got sure, addicted to I'm these. Sure to, that's that's yeah. why. I, that's yeah. surveillance I mean, is why I'm, right. I'm addicted so I'm sure, to energy I'm drinks. sure, like you know, uh, who was the biggest? person you ever surveilled outside of Sonny? Um, well, Sonny, there's no one bigger than Sonny, right? Yeah, so yeah, so no outside of Sonny yeah. was... Um, oh, what was the longest you ever sat surveillance? Um, we would follow people across multiple states. Right. So you could define longest by time or hours. Right. I'd say, or, or you know, di di time or distance. Um, there were people we followed all the way into Pennsylvania. Right. Um, but, you know, where we live, you know that. Mm. It, we live in the tri-state area. It's not uncommon for people to go. I was just driving through Fort Salonga, and I went past um, Frankie the Bug's hotel. And I, <laughs> Frankie the Bug. I, 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 I was sitting there with my son, yeah. and I haven't been there. I used to do surveillance out there all the time. I hadn't yeah. been there in years and years, and I'm driving, and I'm like, this looks familiar, and I look over, and I say to my son, that's Frankie the Bug's hotel. My dad, my son's like, is that Frankie, the, this is Frankie Bug? the Bug? He's like a Ninja Turtle. Yeah. He was like, I was like, ah, it's a long story. I was like, this guy yeah. ran a hotel. and. Yeah. Um, and so, um, so sometimes you'd end up, you'd start in, in Manhattan and end up in Fort Salonga, yeah, yeah. uh, and you start, or you start Fort Salonga and you'd end up yeah, in Pen yeah. Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um, but the, the routine, you usually would buy yourself for your surveillance. Everyone has their own car. Yeah. Sometimes you'd have somebody with you if you wanted to have them yeah. doing the camera work while you were driving or vice versa. But most of the time, everybody was in, was in their own car. And those mm -hmm. could run usually, um, you know, anywhere from a couple of minutes if someone's got a meeting like if if you were my cooperator and you said to me hey on this day i'm going to meet so and so and i wired you up um we would talk beforehand about what the meeting was about we'd always make sure that what was our uh, b belief or instincts on safety right so mm -hmm. your your the, our sources of course are going to be concerned about their safety but they could also get very blinded by what's going on and so part of our job is to make sure that when our source is telling us we're going to a meeting, um, that we're running it through, like, is this a legitimate meeting or is this a meeting where they could be yeah. getting hurt or killed? Right. Um, and so you want to make sure you're asking the questions of your source. Um, all right, so this is based on that other conversation you had. Yeah, who else is going to be there? Um, you know, why is it at this place? Why is it at this time? Have you ever met here before? I mean, and once you're running a source long enough, you start to know the answer to those questions immediately. So mm -hmm. if you're doing this for years, which if you're running a source for years, you'll immediately be able to say, that doesn't seem right. And they'll be like, yeah, that doesn't seem right to me either. And you'll say, well, let's see if we can move it someplace else. Let's see if we can come up with a last minute excuse. Um, and you'll wire that person up with the with an agenda, kind of like your list here, but a yeah, mental list. Yeah. And, and prepare them to, if the opportunity presents itself, to go into those areas to discuss now they can't go in with an actual list because yeah. that would be right you know yeah. so yeah. tell me about that murder you were involved in yeah. in yeah. 1978 yeah. yeah. exactly. yeah. yeah. that was a crazy murder wasn't it <laughs> and, you know you can't do that so but on the other side the source has to be um prepared to go in that direction if the opportunity presents itself mm -hmm. and so you would say hey, you know, we're very interested in, um, you, we heard a rumor about some other crime, if you're talking to your source, right? They might say, hey, yeah, I heard so-and-so robbed the social club or so-and-so um, uh, got a visit by someone from, you know, another family or the DEA visited them. So you want to remind the source of these are the things that if you hear anything, go into it. If they open the door for you, if they yeah. say, can you believe what happened to so-and-so? I don't want to hear on the tape that you're busy watching the Jets game at the restaurant and you're yeah. like, what, huh? Because I want to choke you there when you get back. Yeah, yeah, he you opened the to, door yeah. for you. Yeah. So that was your opportunity to go, yeah, I did hear that. What, you know, yeah, should we exactly be worried? What happened. Yeah. You know, and then let them explain. Because as you know, it's, um, it's much harder to go in and randomly bring up topics. But if the topic comes up, the person is much less suspicious of someone asking a question if you brought it up. If you bring up a topic and I say, yeah, whatever happened with him? Why did he do that? What are you going to accuse me of being a rat? Um, you yeah. brought it up. I would just yeah. say you brought it up. I'm sorry yeah, exactly. if it's a sensitive topic. You brought it up. But if I say to you, let me ask you, you know, I heard this. You'd be like, that's weird that Vinny brought that yeah, up. What, Why what? is he asking yeah. me that question? Yeah. You know, it's funny because when I, I mean, I was always on the other end of the surveillance. Yeah. You know, the guy, yeah. I was always talking to the guy yes. that was wired. Yeah. <laughs> like, so my, yeah. my ex brother in law was wired. He yeah. was on, and he would come to the beach to meet me on the beach. And I used to tell him, Louie. 
Yeah. It's 100 degrees. I'll take that <laughs> shirt off. <laughs> and he's going, no, 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 nah. I got it. I'm waiting for yeah. a call. And yeah. he used to make and, excuses. But, yeah, yeah, but I, it never dawned on me. That was the furthest thing from my mind yeah. that this particular person had a wire. Wire, on him. yeah. You know, but, he, and, but now, you know, listening to you, Explain, you know, I yeah. lived that. Like, I, I yeah. was in on those conversations. Yeah, and yeah. even, like, yeah. you know, Brian was joking about when he, you yeah. know, mic'd me up. And, yeah. you know, where you put it, where it sits, the type yeah. of devices that you use all matter. So, like, you know, in the beginning, if you're, you're um, using device that maybe is in a pocket or on a body, depending on your source, what they wear and how they move, you might have to switch it up. So yeah. I had a guy who kept shit in his pocket a lot. And so if I gave him something to put in his pocket, all I heard was keys and coins yeah. and phone, yeah. and phone yeah. you know, yeah. every, halfway yeah. through the tape, yeah. I'm like, Jesus, shut your fucking phone off. It's yeah. scaring me every time I listen to the tape. Yeah. Um, so you'd have to, you know, figure out, um, you know, or even areas, wiring up yeah. a room sometimes is the best option yeah. because then there's nothing on the person. But if there's a, you know, if there's a room that you can go to that people feel safe in, we had one at a club in the back of the club in the office. I'm like, they're going back there so much. Why don't we just wire the office up right. so we don't have to worry about, you know, missing anything. Um, and then you have to ca account for, like, the ambient noise, you know, if they're at a club, mm -hmm. you know, all that stuff goes in. But, yeah, those conversations you have to have. So you could go into to your question about how long a surveillance could be. There were days where I was prepared to be out all day, and the meeting happens really quick. They go. Mm -hmm. there's, there's limited information that comes out all of right. it, and then this sort of, like, you know, well, we'll find out later, and then you're just kind of waiting at home the rest, on call the rest of the weekend, the rest of the day, to see if there's another phone call that comes in. And then there's times, I swear, where I told my wife, especially when my kids were little, I'll be back in 20 minutes, and I swear. And the next, the next day, I'm like, I'm still out at <laughs> 2 in the morning. Yeah. And that's a very difficult thing to explain, um, you know, to your family. Yeah, that, that, you know, how did something go from 20 minutes to all night? But if when Yeah, but if you if something happens when you're there and it... And it the, uh, a situation comes up, you can't just call time out. You know, you can't leave your source there. Right. Imagine you're imagine you're being cooperated and your handling agent, you know, who's supposed to be like your guardian angel. You just see his car drive off. Oh, wait, see, <laughs> yeah, I gotta like, go home. You gotta go gotta home. Put, I gotta yeah, got a birthday together. party. Yeah, yeah. You'd be like, you know, Did you ever have someone? Because I know on my case there was a time when um, the person that was wired panicked. Mm -hmm. And we were in a hotel room in, in Miami, and he panicked, and uh, and he ran out of the room, and he made an excuse to go out of the room, and he went to the stairwell, and he took the wire yeah, off. Yeah, took the wire off, yeah. Right, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so when we were, right before the show started, you were saying how your mic was muted, yeah. and they were doing a, a sound check, and it reminded me of um, when sources would come back, and there'd be either the recording device was gone, they'd be like, I lost it, mm. or it muted or malfunctioned, um, that was a big problem. Like you get like one of those freebies, mm -hmm. but if you were to, if, if you were to come back and g give me the recording device and I dumped it and I said it never activated or deactivated, um, at some point we we put you under a polygraph to say right. like we need to know the truth. Are you yeah. shutting this thing off? Because it looks really bad. Because guess what the defense attorneys are going to say when that tape is introduced, if it's introduced down the road, is that you shut it off on that day because that was the minute you you confessed to three other murders exactly. you were involved yeah, in exactly. and you didn't want yeah, the agency yeah. you were playing the agents which does happen yeah, by the yeah, way it happened i know it happened yeah. with us yeah so Stuff like that it's yeah. really it's you have to be really strict with mm. you know setting those rules to say you know if you lose this thing uh number one it's paperwork for me so that's a problem yeah. because i gotta it's count for bad. yeah <laughs> bad. I, you're making yeah. me do extra paperwork yeah. it's expensive this thing yeah. and you kind of get like one freebie and then beyond that if you have a habit of losing things or yeah. a habit of malfunctions then um, it's going to call yeah. your truthfulness into question. Yeah. I mean, I never wore white, but I'm sure it has to be. It has to be a, a little scary to walk yeah. into a room where you know people oh, yeah. are capable. Of, you know, they're killers. Yeah. And you know, you're out of wire, and you're sitting down with three fucking yep. serial killers, and you're trying to tape a conversation. <laughs> it's be a little exactly. Especially back then, <laughs> yeah. where um, there was no. You know, no electronic yeah, devices. There was no like today. There's cameras, cameras all everywhere. There's like, smartphones. There's yeah, no, we had why, none of that. Wise guys are yeah. Wise <laughs> yeah. Right. Wise guys are in over their head now because the of fact but, yeah, the technology now. Even I remember once we one of the guys we had uh, uh, had a newer BMW and this was back in the like 2006 seven era, and so Bluetooth was being incorporated mm -hmm. in the cars. And I'm laughing because. Um, remember there's that scene from uh, from Donnie Brasco where Lefty 
pulls the radio out of it. He's driving. <laughs> he's like, what's with this thing? And he's like, stop, you know, what do you, stop fucking with my car. And he rips the radio because he's suspicious yeah. that there's a wire. Yeah. Imagine now with all the technology in a BMW. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> forget yeah. it. You got 4G, 5G, yeah, you got yeah, cellular yeah, radio, yeah, yeah, XM everything. radio. Yeah, everything. You would never, you'd have to go to, a, a wise guy would have to go become an electrical engineer yeah, just yeah, to yeah, stand yeah, the chance yeah, to yeah, know yeah, what's. You'd have to go to the geek squad <laughs> to, find <laughs> out, to find out. Yeah, yeah. To find out. There's no, yeah. there's no hope. So even having a phone um, and as old school as a lot of wise guys still would be, you can't tell people when you come into a room, leave everything behind. There's just too much shit. Too much. That even in a room, your yeah. the light switches. The are, phones are listening. The phones other, are, the yeah, other, Google's listening the to the you. The other day, I had a conversation <clears throat> with my daughter about Ben Hur, the movie yeah. Ben Hur. So she says, "What was the first movie you ever yeah. went to see?" I said, I, "The first movie I saw, my father and mother took me to see Ben Hur with, yep. with Charlton Heston back yeah. in 1960." All of a sudden, and I, 10 yeah. minutes later, I pick up my phone, I go on YouTube, and all yeah, shit about Ben, ben Hush pops It's crazy. Up. My wife and I were, do, were doing the, the, the same thing. It, yeah. it, it, we were talking about something about moving stuff, and all of a sudden, I get all these th uh, <laughs> yeah. videos and advertisements. Yeah. So imagine, you know, the, the, you know, trying to figure out a, com a way to have yeah. a conversation with people, especially younger people coming up. Yeah. Old school guys can still, like... Um, like Paul uh, Bavacqua. Paul Bavacqua, mm -hmm. he was uh, he was um, a soldier in the Colombo family for you know he was around Joe Colombo. That's how far back Paul mm -hmm. Paul went. Paul was one of the last sources that I ran, um, and he uh, he was on the administration by the time that we we were uh, were running him, and he was so old school, um, like he didn't have any electronic devices. But when he would hang around a lot of younger guys. They would always have a phone, at least a phone with them, yeah. and if not a phone, you know, a car with technology in it. So it was out of the norm for him. He couldn't car start carrying around a phone. It wasn't his style. It wasn't his generation. But the younger people that were around him always did, and he couldn't really say to them, leave your phone. Or if yeah. you did, you can't be that diligent all the time and always say, you know, Le you have your mm. phone on you because you walk around with your phone in your pocket. So. Yeah. Um, it's 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 really almost impossible for someone to figure out a way to not be recorded. Now it's very 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 difficult. You have to have every meeting in a pool, uh, you know, or a sauna, exactly. you know, yeah, yeah, uh, to be able to not be. Yeah, massage, and that's yeah, the only place you can go. Korean massage parlors. Yeah. But but my sources would get um, very nervous about it because you start getting paranoid about uh, anything you are wearing that's a recorder yeah. and how easy it would be for them to mm -hmm. figure out you know what it is and you know that yeah. leads to stress and. I, you know, yeah. alcohol abuse, like, sure. believe me, like, yeah, your source, like, the stress of it is very, very real. Very real. Yeah. I, I know my father, when he was under surveillance in Miami, in his office, he had an office, and every time he put on the light switch, everything went on. Yeah. It was hooked up, everything was hooked up yeah. to so they had the room, the, his office wired yeah. with a camera and yeah, everything. Yeah. And every time he hit Turned the light the switch, yeah. everything, everything activated. activated. Yeah. yeah. So through all these surveillances and everything, have you know, like uh, agents have gone bad. I yeah. Mean, you know what I mean? There are agents. Yeah. I mean, the guys that, the Greg Scapa guy. Yeah, that was the a guys, former supervisor of my squad. The guys in Boston the, the, with uh, Whitey Bolton. Delvecchio. Yeah. Have you ever been approached by anybody? Uh, I think there was always an open invitation, especially being first generation Italian. <laughs> yeah. And then there was always an open invitation that if I ever wanted to go to the dark side, yeah, right. I always understood that it would not be very yeah, difficult yeah, for me. Just come right, <laughs> yeah, just, just, just I would just walk, slide right just over. Walk right in. It was a Ronnie D'Agostino in the Colombo family, oh, so it would have worked out. Ryan. Yeah, it would have yeah, yeah. been perfect. I could have just slid under yeah. him. Um, but yeah, no one, no one ever, um, no one ever approached me directly. I honestly do think you have to put out that vibe for those mm -hmm. agents that that were accused of that. You have to put out a vibe that um, you're, you're open to you're it. Open to it. Um, kind of like a, you know, a dating scenario, right? You know, mm -hmm. if, if a woman says, why do I always, why do I always get, you know, men always say this to me and not to you. You're like, you might be putting a vibe out. Like you right. might be putting a vibe out that, that you're interested in that. Yeah. And that might be guys are coming at you from that angle mm -hmm. um, because you're, you're, you're giving a vibe that you're, you're open to it. Um, the, the guys that we mostly dealt with didn't even know who I was until we started making arrests so for my first you know four years on the squad it wasn't until we till from 2005 to 2008 I, it was great because I was a nobody so I could go um, I could go into a, a social club or go into a regular club and sit at a bar you know this is when I was a lot younger and had hair and be there all night and nobody me and another agent who were you know young guys 27 yeah. years old and nobody would think anything of it. Um, then once you start doing the arrests and people know your face and a lot of stuff ends up like in the Post or the Daily News, then you know that at that point, you know, people know who you are. So mm -hmm. if you have a conversation with someone 
um, you, they'll usually try to pump you for information. That's usually the first indication. They're trying to get you to go to the dark side. Right. Um, they're trying to work you. You know, so if you have a conversation, oh, I want to talk to you, but let me ask you something. Yeah, sure. You know, they said so and so got a subpoena, but I was told now you're like, oh, he's just fishing for information. Now, if he gets something from me, now I'm giving a vibe that maybe there is a two way street here right, that that could right. work. That was what Del Vecchio was accused of, the former mm -hmm. supervisor of my squad. For those that don't remember or know, yeah. he was accused of being in bed with Gregory Scarpa, who I think his nickname was the Grim Reaper. It was the Grim Reaper, yeah. My yeah. father was friends with him. Was yeah. he? Yeah, my father had a few sit downs with him. Yeah, he yeah. tried to, he wanted to kill one of my friends. Yeah. One of my, one of my friends was um, dating his uh, ex daughter in law. Okay. In Staten Island. Yeah. And he knew, and he used, and he didn't want the, my friend to sleep over the house because his grandkids were in the house. Oh, okay. Okay. So he was waiting outside the house one day yeah. for my friend to come out, and my friend saw him from the window and called up my father. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did he have a sickle? He was in the black <laughs> so robe? Yeah. They had a little sit down, and my friend was just told not. He said, "I don't, don't care do if you go yeah. out with the girl. Just stay don't, out, don't out of the, the, the house." Door. Which yeah. you know, my father agreed. Old with school. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, that's old school. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, my father was my father was very good friends with with uh, Carmine and all of them, and yeah. Alley Boy, the yeah. old timers. Yeah, with the yep. Columbos, he goes back a long time with them. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sure. But I, the other guys in Boston, they grew up together. Oh right? yeah, they, that was a, a different, different scenario. That's a different scenario. Yeah, because I know in my neighborhood, I come from Ozone Park, and the yeah. Queens House of Detention was in my neighborhood yeah. on Queens Boulevard, and a lot of this, and even Rikers Island, a lot of the COs and their families came from my neighborhood. Yeah. So when we got locked up and we went into the Queens House of Detention or Rikers Island. Those are people you grew up with. Yeah, they took you, care of yep. us because they we, yep. we grew up with them. That's the same scenario in yeah. Boston, right? Absolutely. They and that's why together. they move agents when they always say, why why do why does the FBI take agents uh, and from, you know, uh, Mississippi and move them to New York or vice versa? Mm -hmm. Is because uh, this goes back to J. Edgar Hoover and I think he was right about this, is that there's there's a problem. If you're sending people back to investigate people from an area they grew up in, isn't that sort of a conflict right out of the gate? Right. right? Like, you, these are, there's going to be so much overlap between you and them that how do you remain objective and do an investigation if there's if there's that overlap? There might even be, you know, familial overlap of, of, of this. So, the, but the good thing is, is that for New Yorkers, we're a rare exception because we're the only psychopaths that want to work in New York. Is if you're from New <laughs> yeah, York, yeah, yeah. Because like all the agents I did from New York, that were all from New yeah. York. But yeah. but if you were from anywhere else, like everybody in my class who was outside of New York didn't get back to their office where they. It's called the office like of origin or office of application or something. Mm -hmm. Meaning the office you apply through, the odds were you were not going to get sent back there unless you were from New York because nobody wanted to work in New York. So if you wanted to, they were like, fine, send them back. Yeah. But that can be a real problem if you're too close to that. And the agents in Boston, whereas absolutely that was that they, they grew up with these people and then now they're arresting them and then there's some, a soft spot yeah, on both course. sides. There's yeah. a soft spot on both sides. Um, and then it can lead to, you know, like wild corruption. The, the supervisor of my squad was ultimately indicted by the Brooklyn right. DA's office. And the accusation was that he was providing top cover for Gregory Scarpa as a source so that essentially Gregory Scarpa was allowed to go out and commit murders mm -hmm. while being a source because he was providing really good information to, to the supervisor of my squad to, uh, ign uh, so he would ignore that, but then he would go investigate other, other uh, families or right, other, yeah. uh, other people he was interested in and sort of like turn the blind eye to that. That was the accusation. He yeah. was ultimately, I think, acquitted. There was a, there was a lot of problems with the prosecu prosecutor's case. I didn't know. Um, the supervisor, Linda Vecchio, I didn't know. I, when I got to the squad, it was like a month in, and like, oh, by the way, the former supervisor is on there. I was like, what the fuck did I land into? <laughs> yeah. But I was responsible for providing all the documents to the Brooklyn DA's office. Um, uh, I don't know how I ended up with that task, but when, for all the discovery, right, you're allowed, you know when you get arrested, yeah. your lawyers are allowed well. to ask for <laughs> yeah. everything, uh, you know, everything. anything about you and everything like, you know, seven degrees right. of separation about you. Right. And, everything. and it's when it's organized crime, it goes back 100 years. Mm -hmm. When it's not, when it's regular crime, it might be a file this big, here you go. When it's organized crime, it's, boxes. and it's boxes of information of carbon copies, you know, going, like, cigarette burns are on this stuff, that's how old it is, <laughs> this stuff, you know. Yeah. And um, there was so much around Gregory Scarpa um, that we had to we had to produce, uh, uh, but there was definitely I remember you know there was definitely a comfort level 
that seemed like a little bit too comfortable. Like he, I, there was, you know, he used to, when he was meeting with Gregory Scarpa, he would always want to be alone. He never wanted another mm -hmm. agent there. Now that could be if you have a new agent that you don't trust to be around your source. I've done that. And yeah. I was done to me when I first got on, they were like, go sit over there in the corner. Yeah, yeah. And cause they didn't trust you to be around that person. Mm -hmm. Cause you're responsible for that person. And if yeah. that person's not comfortable, you know, there's a new agent asking yeah. stupid yeah. questions. I was told after I got a new name in the witness protection program, yeah. I was told by a, my, my, my handler yeah. not to tell another agent AGF. my new name. Yeah, exactly. Don't let him, yeah. don't tell your name yeah. to nobody. To anybody. Yep. Yeah. Even in the squad yeah. area, we didn't refer to sources by their real name. It was code names. Yeah. And if anyone said to you, Hey, what's uh you know guy, one guy was Dixie Cup? What's Dixie Cup's real name? That's a super red flag. You'd yeah. be like, why would you care? Yeah. Why would you care to know yeah. that? Um, and I even had a code name when I got money. Like I had yeah, yeah sign yeah, the code yeah, name. Yeah, you never code sign name. your I real name. The, code I don't name. have any, I don't get any more money now. But for years and years and years, I was had a code yes. name. Yeah, yeah. It was a fruit. I don't want to tell you. No, what don't. Kind uh, of fruit okay, it was, I don't want to know why it was a fruit either. No, not I. It just was a fruit. And I used to laugh all the time. What am I? They made me fruit. Was a fruit. They didn't. They didn't let you pick your, your name. No, no, they, get, they no. They get, they mean pick my name when when I went into the witness protection. Yeah. Program. Oh, right. Yeah. They gave me. They told me to pick five names. Okay. And I picked five names, and then they chose the one out of the, the five, five that yeah, I got there. Yeah. But uh, the, the code, code name, name no, that you, yeah. that came like day one. Yeah. The code name, yeah. Like we usually would do that on our own. Yeah. Yeah. And try to come so up with. So let me ask you this question. The last question. So yeah. now you do all the surveillance. You're yeah. following these guys for months. The mob goes back years. Now the day comes. It's the day yeah. we're going to make the roundup, right? Yeah. So it's the day. Now you know ahead of time on Friday we're going to make the roundup. What's your process? What's your, yeah. you know, coming leading up to that roundup? So usually we would have... Um so, so I was always on the other end yeah, of that roundup. Not knowing when yeah. it was coming. When my bell rang 4.35 in the morning, yeah, I went, oh, shit, yeah. I knew exactly it was And you guys door. are always, it was yeah. always hysterical because yeah. there was always rumors and speculation constant about, I heard next Tuesday is going to be the day. <laughs> yeah. like, and, my, yeah. and my sources would be like, is it Tuesday? I'm like, I can't tell you, but no. Yeah. I'm not supposed to tell you, but I don't know what the fuck you're talking yeah. about. I'm yeah. like, I was like, yeah. uh, you know. Like John told them, I knew you were coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but they guess yeah. every day. So I'm like, well, if you guess yeah. every day is the day you're going to get arrested, yeah. eventually you're going to be right. Well, and go, you I knew, knew it was today. But you knew the day, so what was Yeah, the, but we would know, but this is what I got all fucked up all the time was, since there were five families, hmm. we would, everyone's working their investigations and then there's all crossover. And then what, I would say out of all the takes out, takedowns we did, other than the big mafia takedown in 2011, which we did have a lot of heads up on, hmm. most of the other takedowns happen like where something else happens out of your control that forces your timeline so sooner. You yeah, wound, sooner. So violence can happen. Hmm. Threats on um, threats of, of of violence against people. So you can't let, you know, if there's a uh, a threat against somebody, you can only let that simmer to a point where. Uh, you have to intervene because if that person ends up dead, imagine finding out that the FBI had sources that knew that there was a plot to murder somebody and the agents were like, oh, let's see how this plays out. And the guy yeah. ends up fucking dead. <laughs> yeah. You'll know, be like, you know, so you're going to get sued, right? The bureau's going to get sued. And, th and this, I was thinking about this on the drive over, like, um, you know, the, the days of doing like the real undercover work, um, the Joe Pistone style undercover work, mm -hmm. that was such a unique moment in history um, that he was able to, exploit in 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 that way because the risk now i just could never imagine the bureau even when i was there taking on that kind of risk of being involved in something so intimately and the liability that comes along with that if someone gets hurt or robbed or you know buildings burned down and you you as a law enforcement officer you can't just you can't just you can't just pretend it's not happening to build your case you just can't do that which is why you know you don't when was the last time you heard about a real effective undercover on anything really forget organized crime on anything it's almost it just doesn't happen because right. it's just it's too difficult it's hard enough with sources who were in that life in the first place but even when they're bringing that to your attention so if we knew that there was an arrest coming up like um you'd have to then uh really start making sure you know where people are actually sleeping at night which sounds common sense like but you but you don't like how many times you go out and if you don't do your homework, the person's not there. Mm -hmm. And now they know you're looking for them. Yeah, and now they're on the my lamp. father. They raided my father's yeah. house. And my father was living in Florida yep. with his girlfriend and yeah. they raided my mother's house, house on yeah. 88th street in Ozark yeah. Park. And then she called me yep. and I called my father, go, they just raided mommy's yeah. house. And he ran out of the, the house, house yeah. and he went on the lamp. Because he was worried that <laughs> yeah. the next stop was <laughs> over there. <laughs> yeah. That happened all the time. G yeah. Girlfriends, Gumars that we would go to a house and, and, and end up there on the wrong day and they're not there. 
um, would happen a lot. So usually the nights or days before, you'd have surveillance teams watching the house, sometimes even on a 24-7 basis if it was a really important subject. Yeah. But at a minimum, you're checking utility bills, you're checking phone calls, you're checking source information to so you can put down um, in the search warrant or an arrest warrant that you know, not just a guess, that you know that the person's right. residing there. Because we don't want to be at a house where you're there it's the wrong house that's of the worst that's not. bad for us too like yeah, i don't want to bother a family and they're like he hasn't been here for four months and now yeah. like we're like sorry about your door you know yeah, like yeah, yeah. like yeah we'll yeah. fix that yeah. you look like an asshole yeah. so it's it, we really want to make sure um and because wise guys were so sensitive to that they would lots of times guys would go to florida all the time they'd yeah. say i heard there's going to be a roundup and they just go to florida yeah. um and hang out for like two weeks until everything blew over and then the, and then they would come back but you'd have to put together your arrest team. Yeah. You know, um, usually would have at least you know five or six people per uh, mm -hmm. per arrest. So it was super safe on our part. To 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 uh, we knew where it would be. We had the element of surprise. It's not like a yeah. regular cop that's arresting someone on the street, which mm -hmm. is, in my opinion, overall a much more dangerous activity. Like a car stop. The car stop's way of more course, dangerous. Without a doubt, that, you, you know, yeah. you don't know who that person is. Right. You don't pick the location. You right. don't pick yeah. the, the, yeah. the where they pull over on the side of the road. But where we would do it, we would have um, you know, a lot of homework in and around the person. Um, but sometimes you don't, you know, if you're assisting another squad, if another squad's doing a massive takedown and they need bodies, you'd arrest guys sometimes and you didn't know much about, you just knew what was in the warrant, right. you know, and that what you were doing was, had, you had legal did authority. You, how did you feel, but you personally, so now you're putting on your flap jacket, you're yeah. getting ready. You, how yeah. did you feel? Did you get butterflies? Did you feel like yeah. knowing that you're arresting a guy that's a dangerous guy? You know, yeah. How I think did you feel I think personally? you try to like. I think you always try to. Um, you you don't want to be complacent. You know, you don't want to take it for granted. Mm. And the more you did it, the 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 problem was the more. It's like driving fast. You know, if you oh. drive fast all the time, you you feel like oh, it's nothing ever bad ever happened. You get used to it, but at the same time, like. I think going in and being super nervous is really bad too for mm -hmm. me. So it's almost like being on stage, to be honest. Like yeah. there's a level of like alertness and anxiety that's healthy. And then there's a level that's so consuming, you won't be able to function. Right. And so for me, it was always about finding that balance of keeping it lighthearted enough with everybody on the team. You know, I don't want to be anxiety ridden and, you know, <laughs> oh, where's your extra magazines? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, like, yeah. Jesus, we're all going to die. You know, like yeah. you don't want to be getting people spun up. But you don't want to be, you know, walking in and be like, oh, shit, I don't have my gun yeah, with me. Like, yeah. you know, you don't want to be that laid back. So you want to find, like, a, a way to make sure everybody knows this is serious and what everyone. And this is where you practice, too, like, you know, with your team, what, it, what it, you know, knocking on the door and how you stack up and who's going to do what. You want to think through it. Like, if we go in, how many people are supposed to be there? Oh, he lives with his family. Who's going to, you know, who's going to, um, you know, the wife's going to be hysterical, right? Mm -hmm. you, lots of times the wives yeah. are just fucking hysterical and the husband's yeah told the wives they're not doing anything wrong anymore. Yeah. So the wives are like, you know, I wish my wife loved me that much. You know, like, he hasn't done anything. My wife would be like, yeah. take him away. He's fucking full yeah, of yeah, shit. Yeah, he's got a girlfriend. He's got a girl. <laughs> take away. You know, yeah. it was it was amazing, the, lo the loyalty. But someone's got to go on the side yeah. and calm the wife down. Or if there's adultish age children, you know, anyone yeah. over the age of 15, their kids are going to have questions and they of might course. be chesty and getting in your face there might be a dog or whatever yeah. so if you can go in and make sure that you know um you can get in quickly mm -hmm. you can get everybody seated on the couch you know check the couch to make sure there's nothing in there and everyone calm the fuck down you can explain okay this is the arrest warrant he's going to be taken here and you know if, if you go into it like that and you're not escalating the situation then then the nervous part of it goes away very very quickly right. but it's when you go in and there's like shit that you didn't anticipate happening people showing up you know people walking in the house neighbors sometimes would walk yeah. in and all of a sudden there's someone else in the house you have no idea yeah. who this person is and you don't know if they're a threat to you so now you're yeah. pushing them out of the house you get your fucking hands off of yeah. me and you're like you just walked into like a crime scene in your pajamas like you belong you know you own the place and you're worried that you're wondering why we wonder who the fuck you are exactly you know well i just wonder what's going on every I'm time i got arrested in my house when I, the, I know the first question i was asked was do you have any weapons, weapons in, the in the house? Yeah, that's the first mm -hmm. question. I, the, when I, that I got arrested, and uh, before we end, I just tell you, you'll, you'll get a kick out of this. So you know, the cell phones, kid, the old, the big cell phones, when they yeah, first came oh, the, out. Yeah, the so Nokia I had one on the charger. So they raided yeah. my house. They raided in, in 1995. My house gets raided by the NYPD and the mm -hmm. FBI, and I, they got me on the couch and I'm handcuffed. And my daughter, she was little, she's going oh. around going, "Daddy, are these your friends? They're running all over my, you know, right?" And yeah. uh, and 
all of a sudden, this, my cell phone starts ringing, but I had, you could hear, the, you know, <laughs> and it's Stevie, this guy Stevie Mangano. Yeah. He was in Brooklyn, and, yeah. he's, and he's yelling on the phone. They're Get out of the house! Yes. They're raiding everybody's house. They're locking everybody up. Get out of yeah. the house! And I'm yeah. sitting on the couch. It's too late. So it's too late for that. I'm already handcuffed. And he's out. Get out of the house! They're raiding everybody's house. They would yeah. always. Yeah. That, that was. That you're so right. That was something that the wise guys question. and their wives. It was like protocol. You, we had our protocol. You had yours. They would run to the phone and immediately call we'll other wives yeah. and say, hey, they're rounding everybody. So we'd have to go in and no phones, no cell phones. Yeah. And it got yeah. harder with technology because yeah, you could just course. shoot a text. Yeah. But it was immediate. Like, it was funny that like, you go in and the yeah. wife would immediately run yeah, to the exactly. phone. Yeah. And you're like, you think, oh, lawyer? No, it's not lawyer. It's Susan, Susan. who's married yeah. to Stephen. Yeah. Yeah. That know, was like, get yeah. out of, they're yeah. coming around. They're, they're, they're coming around. Grab <laughs> everybody up. Get out, get out of the house. Yeah. Uh, but I knew every time my my bell rang at five o'clock in the morning, I knew the last time I got arrested in 04 by Jerry yeah. and all of them, I was sitting on um, a bench in front of my son's house and I took my cell phone and it was a sunny dad and I put my cell phone down and I was sitting on the, uh. the bench like this and all of a sudden I heard, don't move, <laughs> motherfucker. And I looked up and there was a gun in my face. Louis, I don't know if you knew him, Louis. He, I he, don't remember. Then he became the head of the Lucchese okay, squad. Okay, yeah. He was standing in front of me and and, <laughs> and, he had, and, he, and and I just looked and then they grabbed me yeah. and they just lifted me up off the bench. When and you then, least expect it. Yeah, that was it. And my whole life changed in that moment <laughs> yeah. in the blink of an eye. And here like, we are. I'm getting too old for this shit. Yeah. Probably ran through Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, listen, it was a pleasure. Yeah, as always. Thank you again. Yep. Uh, yeah. See you again soon. Um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in uh, to Reform Gangsters and have a good day. Take care. How's that? Great. Uh, one thing. Is that good? You want to plug? You want to plug your comedian? Yeah, or, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Website or anything? Instagram? Yeah, you could say, um, you know. If you want, yeah, yeah. you can just say. You do it. Can we, can we, can we, I'm going to edit okay. this so we can pick it up. Sure. And I wanted to say, I wanted, you want to ask... Um, would you like both Reese and Alfie to start FBI agent? You want to end with that? All right, we can end with that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah, and then just wrap it up and then, you know, say, hey, you want to plug anything? And then just give out your information. Okay, so, sounds right. good. So uh, before we go, let me ask you this question. You were in the FBI for how many years? Started again. So, Started sorry. Again. So before we end, let me ask you this question. How long were you in the FBI for? 11 years. So, and yeah. what did you like the best and what did you like the least in those 11 years? I think it's like uh, I think it's a lot like any relationship. There's in the beginning, you know, the in the beginning, like, oh yeah, it's you know, you're you're doing yeah. you're doing a lot of the things that uh, you want to do. You're you're full of piss and vinegar, so you, you know, there's no kind of obstacle that you can't overcome. So you want to start working a case. There's so much opportunity in the FBI to work like cases. You know, you think who would who wouldn't it if you did that? But there, it's the government, and there's there are people that end up there that just kind of get burned out early on but coming in new and especially if it's something you wanted for a big part of your life you get in and the world's your oyster you want to you know mm. figure out who's who's what sources that maybe you can get involved in, what surveillance you can get involved in. you're traveling all over which is so exciting all of a sudden we're going to you know Manhattan Beach we're going to we're going to Beverly Hills for the week because yeah. there's a cocaine deal <laughs> yeah. from uh, you know Ori Spado has got a guy who's going to pick up cocaine on the Queen Elizabeth II and you're like yeah. holy fuck this is insane <laughs> you know um but I think that part of it is so rewarding um, to be involved in stuff that really, for up to that point in your life, is stuff you only read about and saw in the movies. And suddenly, before you, you blink, you look and go, I can't believe I'm like, involved in this. Like, I'm actually allowed to be involved in this. But I think the worst part about it, the part that you least like, is that as um, the Bureau, in my opinion, moved away from investigations and moved more towards like intelligence collection, which mm -hmm. is really all the stuff that the shit show that they're involved in now. And you know, I just don't think we, as a, as an agency, we do intelligence collect. We're we're good at investigating a crime, collecting evidence, f doing interviews, working sources, and figuring out what happened. I think what we're not really good at, and the government generally isn't really great at, is collecting information and try to prevent and predict and metrics and data. When the Bureau started moving towards that being more important, so when they were less interested in the indictment we had, and they were more interested on the statistics, not the statistics around the indictment, but like, how many pieces of intelligence did you disseminate? That to me was when I was like, yeah, I don't think I, this is for me anymore. I don't think I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna enjoy this as much anymore because imagine doing something and you're like, man, this guy just got convicted, it was a big case. And someone's more interested in like, you know, would they serve you for lunch, you know, at the trial? And you're like, that's what your question is, not about this big yeah, takedown we yeah. did. So when they, when they, and that's why people in headquarters, when you start 
um, what's the expression? You, you show me the show me the um, show me the the motiva- motivation, and I'll predict the behavior. Mm. So if if you tell people that we're gonna promote and we're gonna advance people within an organization based on intelligence metrics, then I'll predict the behavior. The behavior is people are gonna build cases to get them the most of that so they can get up here. Mm-hmm. But if you tell people I'm gonna build promotions and advancement on indictments, convictions, arrests, you know, the things that you are really important, then people are gonna focus their investigations on that. And so to me, when it shifted towards, we don't really care as much about that stuff, mm. which is the meat and potatoes of what I think being an FBI agent yeah. should be. Um, that was when, to me, the least favorite part about that was when I had to fill out forms of that. I'm like, this is so stupid, you know, that, that, you, that you don't care about the actual part of it, which is a shame because um, who wants to join who wants to join any organization to do the other thing? Like, right. you didn't read a book. Like, Joe Pistone wasn't talking about, and then I went in and filled out a form, <laughs> and I had 62 credits yeah. for it. Like, who yeah. cares? No one cares about yeah. that. Yeah. That's not why you, that's, that doesn't inspire yeah. people to do that. So. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I, even a couple of the FBI agents that I still talk to that are out of the organized crime task force yeah. now, they, they feel the same way yeah. you feel. They said it's not fun no more. No. They're, they're, not, not, they're not investigating shit. No. Yeah. And it's, there's no it's money. A problem. Yeah. They defunded them. Yeah. Like, basically they yep. defunded them. Yep. They have no money to work with. Yep. Yeah. It's no it's 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 there's no uh you know if they if you want to build an intelligence uh, agency there's they they you're going to draw on a certain type of person that's going to go to the FBI mm-hmm. and then I don't know how people wonder how bad things like that happen when these are the people you bred yeah. to get to these higher levels in the bureau right. and then you're like how could they be so stupid you're like because all they were trained to do was look at things through this lens of data collection with yeah. no trials right like everything i did there was a back of my mind of me being cross-examined right yeah. i had a trial well, but yeah. imagine a case agent and sitting right. there with the attorney with, with the attorney the US like i'm gonna have to prove this yeah. right that, that i'm gonna have to the the, the 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 burden is tremendous but if you're just working on intelligence collection there is no trial so i could come back and say anthony told me fucking bin laden's nephew <laughs> yeah. is yeah. gonna you know drive right. a, a taxi cab into whatever if I'm wrong, there really is no penalty for that. Right. It goes into some document, and then it, some other guy reads it and goes, we've got corroboration that it's Bin Laden's nephew. Is, <laughs> it's all bullshit, right? right? It's all an echo chamber. Right. But when you go to a trial, right, the, 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 they call it like a crucible. Like when you go to a trial, it, it, the process of a trial is designed to burn off the garbage, and you're left with the purity of what's supposed to be the truth, right? right? And that happens because you have a defense attorney who is going to go after you because it's his um, it's obligation job. to do that. He's going to go, go, the government's going to come at you with the full force of the government and try to crush you, right? And then there's a defense attorney on the other side who's going to say, I'm going to make sure I make every argument I can to make sure the government proves every accusation beyond the reasonable doubt. I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that I basically make their life miserable mm. and vice versa. And when that happens, the jury gets to sit there as the arbiter, as the people watching the show, to watch, oh, that argument fell apart, this one's being built up, this one's being destroyed, and it makes a decision on that of what the truth is. But if you don't have that process, imagine just people making accusations or rumor and conjecture, and then trying to build you know, plans around that, and then when things don't happen the way you do, you're like, yeah, because there was no one on the other side of that argument disproving what you were saying. Mm-hmm. So if everybody wants to believe that the sky is purple, and I get in a room with people that believe the sky is purple, they're gonna go out and find sources that tell them the sky is purple, purple. Yeah. right? And then people go, well, the truth is this. And then when the shit hits the fan like it has over the last how many years, um, with Department of Justice and the FBI in particular, right, the Durham report just came out, yeah. people, it, I'm like, this is the least surprising thing is because you've created this situation where people are telling each other what they wanna hear, and there was nobody who felt comfortable enough to say, uh, I disagree. Right, yeah, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. And, and, and your guy's saying that, but what's the proof of that? Yeah. Um, but criminal agents get that. Crim- people who are criminal, all the agents you're talking about, we, our brains are wired that way. Mm. People who work intelligence stuff, they, their brains are different. different. Yeah. Their standard is like, you know, so low for... It's for, not good. Yeah, it's not good. That, for, for what, you know, it's good if It you wasn't just, good for Trump, that's for sure. <laughs> exactly. And then, you know, all this stuff comes out and we're like, how did it get this far? It's because yeah. you have people that were, mm. were comfortable, mm. you know, entertaining these things without really saying we really need to prove this this is like major consequences can come from this 
Um, so that part of me is a long, long answer as to what I dislike right. about we it. Got, but we got the gist of yeah. it. Well, I want to thank you for coming yeah, on thank the you show. So much. And is there anything you're working on that you'd like to talk sure, about? Sure, if you want to, uh, you know, uh, so I, I have a podcast called Proof of Work Podcast. It's on YouTube and Spotify and, and anywhere you can get podcasts. I've been slacking since uh, December. I had a, a flood in my house, so I've basically been had to move suddenly. So people are like, what, have you been banned? I haven't been banned if you're watching this. Uh, but I am coming back soon. I hope to be back into my house soon. So if you want to check out my podcast where I talk about organized crime stuff, I talk about legal cases in the news, um, uh, you know, random stuff, uh, check it out, Proof of Work uh, podcast. And then you can follow me on Twitter at Proof of Work uh, 1 on uh, Twitter. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks yeah. again. Thanks again.